So there are so many statistics flying around at COP23 that it can be very hard to keep them all in mind. But two figures that keep coming up time and time and again in different meetings and different sectors are 30% and 2%. Now 30% is how far we go towards meeting the mitigation goals of Paris Agreement, how far we would get towards stabilising climate by 2030 if we looked after our lands, if we carefully restored and protected the natural environment across the globe. On the other hand, 2% is the amount of development funding that gets channeled towards the stewardship of nature. Now, this is a major disconnect that many people are talking about here and that really needs to be addressed. Another one is the disparity between um, funding that goes towards mitigation and emiss emissions reductions and funding that gets channeled towards adaptation. Currently, only 5% of climate finance goes towards adaptation. And this is despite the fact that mitigation and adaptation are on a, are pa are an equal uh, footing in the Paris Agreement and are deeply interwoven processes. So it's very clear that we need a lot more money going towards adaptation and we need a much higher proportion of this going towards restoring the natural environment. But how is this going to be achieved in practice? Well, a major me a message emerging from various talks and meetings is that we need, in order to um, redistribute investments, that it better reflects um, the debt we owe to nature for having subsidised our, our economy for so many years, is full engagement with the private sector. So I was very surprised to learn that the Adaptation Gap Report, which was launched just a few days ago by the United Nations Environment Programme, and that discusses the differential between the amount of adaptation needed and the amount of funding available, this report didn't mention commerce and barely dis discussed trade. Now this is despite the fact that trade and commerce are major determinants of human resilience. And this is despite the fact that the private sector is very interested in risk and has recently established a task force on climate-related financial disclosure. I was much more encouraged, however, by all the sessions that are taking place, um, yes, that took place yesterday and that are taking place today about this need to engage with the private sector. And that there is very good representation from the private sector at this meeting. And um, there were a number of very high quality, very good productive discussions involving different members of the private sector, people from government, people from NGOs and the research community, all talking about the need to um, develop partnerships in order to really build resilience. Now a topic that keeps coming up is the potential to um, mobilise a significant amount of um, funding through the insurance sector. And I want to just mention one more statistic and that is 625 million US dollars. That's the amount, that's how much property damage was avoided during Hurricane Sandy in northeastern USA as a result of the restoration or the protection of coastal wetlands. Now that's a figure to make anybody sit up, never mind the insurance sector. And there are many studies, many scientifically robust studies from all over the globe showing or demonstrating the cost effectiveness of nature-based approaches to dealing with the consequences of climate change. Now this was a message that was really echoed at a high-level meeting yesterday that was very well attended by ministers and other delegates from countries like the Maldives, um, uh, British Virgin Islands, Papua New Guinea and Sao Tome, where they were all endorsing the need to scale up ecosystem-based approaches in climate policy and for ecosystem-based approaches to become the norm, not only in the UNF process here but also in business practice. And in the words of the Minister for Environment and Energy from the Maldives, we need to massively increase ambition on ecosystems in climate policy, not just for human beings, but for all of nature of which we are a part. Put another way, and to end on some words, which are possibly the best that I've heard here at COP, is that we very quickly need to get to a place where people who don't care about climate, who aren't really bothered about resilience, people who don't really give a damn about nature, are nonetheless making very good decisions.